For this part of the experiment, we need three combinations of resistance and capacitances, but I'm going to demonstrate with only one combination. So I have a resistor, which is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. It has brown, black, and orange as the color code, and I have a capacitor, which is 22 microfarad. And this is a breadboard, which I'm going to use for connecting my circuit. The breadboard has four separate rows of pinholes here. In each row, the holes which are in one column are interconnected. However, for in all the four rows, they're disconnected. I'm going to use my capacitor on the breadboard, and I'm going to put it on the same column, same column, but on different rows. So these two terminals are disconnected. Now I'm going to connect my resistor on the same column as the capacitor because they are interconnected. And I'm going to push it on another column because they are disconnected. Now, I'm going to put a square wave across this capac across my circuit, across the resistor and the ground. This is the positive. The positive goes to the positive, which is the resistor. The negative goes to the ground, which is this end of the capacitor. Now, I'm going to see the rise, the charge and the discharge of this capacitor through this oscilloscope. So I want to connect the probes from the oscilloscope, the positive part to the positive side of the capacitor, the negative part to the common ground. You can see that the rise and the fall of the capacitor is already visible on this oscilloscope. However, you can see that it is not fully charging to its full extent. So we need to change the time period that is given by the square wave for the square wave input here. The time period, time constant for this circuit is 22 milliseconds that is given by the product of the uh, resistance and the, uh, and the capacitor. Now, the time period for the square wave needs to be approximately 10 times of the time constant of the circuit. So 22 milliseconds, I need to put around 220 or more. Let's enter 235 milliseconds. I'm going to change the amplitude from two volts peak to peak to one volt peak to peak so that the capacitance charging and discharging fits the screen. Press one, peak to peak. As you can see, the we can fully see the capacitor charging, reaching a stable point, and then discharging. We can press this button to make, to make the screen stop or synchronize. Okay. After this, you can use the section per division to make it smaller or to enlarge it. And you can use the volts per division to actually make the amplitude look smaller or bigger. This is the largest we can go. I can use this cursor to move up and down, vertical, and I can use this cursor to move back and forth, left and right. So I am going to position the edge here for the charging of the capacitor in an intersection of the horizontal grid and the vertical grid. Now, I need to take readings of the voltage and the rise of the capacitor with respect to the time period. So, I'm going to change this to channel one because this is the channel that we're using. Then we have two lines here which we can use for measuring our time. So I'm going to focus the first one, place the first one in the beginning of the charging of the capacitor and I'm going to place the second one on the next vertical grid. So in the difference between the first cursor and the second cursor is given by delta here, which is 25 millisecond. And in that 25 millisecond, the capacitor has charged from here to here, which is the voltage, and we are going to find what is the volt increase in voltage from here to here. 
For that, we need to change the cursor type from time to voltage. This will give two horizontal cursors. So I'm going to place the first one at the base and the second one at the point where it intersects the first grid line after the starting. So this is the point where it intersects the first vertical line after the starting. And the difference between these two horizontal cursors is given by delta 688 millivolts. Now secondly, I am going to do this for equal time intervals till the capacitor reaches the full charging here. So we know that all the vertical grids give equal time intervals. So the next reading that I need to take is at 50 millisecond, 75 millisecond, 100 millisecond, and so on. So we, in order to get the voltage rise in here, for the 50 millisecond, we need to find the point for the second cursor where it intersects the second vertical line after starting charging. So this is the point where it intersects. And the difference in the voltage here from the first cursor and the second cursor is again given by delta here, which is 896 millivolt. So the last reading will be for this cursor to intersect the last vertical line, which is within the charging of the capacitor. So which is here. And the voltage difference between the two horizontal cursors is given by delta 976 millivolt. This is the last reading because after that, after this reading, the capacitor starts discharging before it reaches the next vertical grid. This is the end of data collection for this part of this experiment.